What's up, Annette soldiers? I'm Ned Alliance. Today I'm bringing you a new series that follows the events of my What If the Jedi Counselor Survived Order 66. Now, if you haven't watched it, I recommend checking it out. There is a link at the top of the screen and in the description below. So if you wish to understand this story to its full potential, I cannot stress enough, watch the story's predecessor. It's still considered by many of my fans to be some of my best work, so I hope you like it. And like always, if you enjoy this video, please leave a like and subscribe for more Star Wars videos. But without further ado, let's begin. Sir, we are 24 hours away from the target. Good. Soon the Jedi in the Pathetic Republic will feel the wrath of the new Sith Empire. It's been 19 years since Palpatine's fall. The galaxy has since been in a period of peace. Chancellor Bail Organa managed to lead the Republic towards success and prosperity. The Jedi have since rebuilt their temple and have assisted the Republic in its quest for peace. Together, Masters Yoda, Kayati Mundi, and Kenobi have guided the Order for the last two decades. Obi-Wan has now mastered the ability to see through the Force, and has even taken on an apprentice of his own. Kenobi still keeps in contact with Anakin and his family, it's just been a while since they actually talked to each other. The Council assembled in their chamber. Seisi Tin then listed the status of the off-world Jedi. Masters Tano and Voss have been dispatched to the planet known as Zayas to inspect the Force for any darkness. Darkness? Master Shakti commented. Zayas was once home to an ancient Sith Empire. I feel the planet will forever be covered in darkness. Darkness is one thing. It's the Dark Siders we have to worry about, Kayati Mundi added. But the Jedi are stronger than ever, Master Luminari Unduli said. Whatever Dark Siders rise, they wouldn't stand a chance. Even still, Master Plo Koon stated, we must stay vigilant. And stay vigilant. We shall, Grandmaster Yoda said, scanning the room. In time of peace, we are. But last, how much longer will it? The council grew quiet, each member pondering the will of the Force. Then, Kenobi spoke up. We'll never promise to tomorrow. That's why we must fight for what we have today. And today, we have peace. Before any of the Jedi could speak, Chancellor Bail Organa came into the chambers escorted by his bodyguard, known as Officer Cody. Before Cody even saw Obi-Wan, Kenobi was on his feet and ready to greet his old friend. Bail walked to the center of the room as Kenobi approached his former commander. Cody, my friend, it's good to see you again. Likewise, Obi-Wan. Cody said, happy to see Obi-Wan, but a bit dismayed of his visual injury. I don't think I'll ever get used to that. You Jedi being able to see with no vision. It's just odd to me. It's quite all right, my old friend. Obi-Wan laughed and shook Cody's hand. But come to think of it, I heard you retired. I did, from the military. Cody said with a smirk, I'm not as spry as I once was, and guarding the Republic is a taxing job. So now, I guard the Chancellor. And what about Rex? Kenobi questioned. Ha, are you kidding? Rex will be on the front lines until he falls over dead. Cody joked. And even then, there's no promises. Obi-Wan and Rex chuckled amongst themselves. Then, everyone turned their attention to the Chancellor. As you all may know, we have had peace since the fall of the tyrant Palpatine, and although we are not technically in a war, we have been fighting the remnants of the Separatists for over a decade. For although we have captured all the remaining Separatist leaders, the droids continue to invade our planets. But how is this possible? Master Mundi questioned. All of the droid factories that could successfully manufacture them have been destroyed. Yes, that is correct, Master, Bail confirmed. That is why I suppose the culprit is hiding right under our noses. Obi-Wan absorbed Bail's words as he brushed his beard. So you're saying there's a factory on our Republic planet? Precisely. That's why I came to you. If this information would have spread through the Senate, CAC finished Bail's sentence. Then the culprit may be warned, and thus have time to cover their tracks. Yes, Organa said. What planets do you suspect, Chancellor? Master Unduli questioned. Organa held out three data pads. I have narrowed my search to three separate planets. Corellia, Lothal, and Naboo. Hearing the name Naboo piqued Kenobi's interest, but worried him at the same time. Bail continued. I've taken the liberty of calling a Senate meeting scheduled noon tomorrow. So while the Senator's attention is turned towards Coruscant, I wish for you to conduct your investigations. CAC used the Force to carry the data pads to his hand. He then began to read the documents to better understand them. After taking a few minutes to converse, the Council chose to accept the task bestowed on them, after which Bail thanked them for their time and left along with Cody. The Jedi discussed the mission further, and Kenobi volunteered to go to Naboo. He planned on doing his duties, but he also missed Anakin, and he saw this as a chance to catch up with his old friend. Master Shakti and Plo Koon were chosen to go to Corellia. Master Luminara and the newest member of the Jedi Council, Master Kanan Jarrus, were chosen to go to Lothal, and Yoda chose to accompany Kenobi to Naboo. And with all their plans in order, the Council dismissed. 
and each Jedi assigned to the mission disembarked for their designated planets. As Yoda and Kenobi's ship flew out of the Coruscant atmosphere, Yoda couldn't help but look back at the massive city planet with sorrow. Obi-Wan could sense Yoda's feelings. Are you alright, Master? Yoda looked at Kenobi. Bad feeling I have, Obi-Wan. What do you mean, Master? Yoda peered out the window once more. Everything I fear is about to change. And that is the end of chapter one. I hope you guys enjoyed. Make sure to like and subscribe for chapter two. And until next time, guys, I'll see you later. Peace.